Hello again! So this is going to be the third in my series of videos about reeds. The first two were about adjusting and repairing your older reeds and the ones that you're using at the moment. Now we're moving on to some reed making. So we're going to make an unfinished reed. This is for a Spanish soprano and we're going to finish it off. And you can buy these reeds from me in this state uh, for less money obviously than a finished one and you can do this as part of your practice. This is part of how I learnt reed making is buying them in this uh, halfway house kind of stage and it's a lot more satisfying than uh, trying to start from the beginning because you end up with more reeds that work this way and you learn the skills. Um, we're going to follow quite a similar pattern to what we've done on the first two videos. So the first thing we're going to look at is the fit of this reed on the staple and reaming it and we do that while it's dry and then I've got one in the water here already so that we can move straight on to scraping which we need to do while it's wet. So let's get the staple off the instrument. This is my Spanish soprano shawm made by Eric here at the shawm shop and I'm just going to have a look and see whether I've already got this fitting nicely on this staple. That's not bad actually. So usually if you've got a brass staple you'll be able to see a bit of a line where your reeds usually sit on there and you'll have some idea how far they usually go on. This is sitting pretty much on that line so I don't want to do too much to it. If that's really really perching on the top or it won't go on at all then you need to make that hole in the base a little bit bigger and the tool you use for that is a reamer. So this is a spiral reamer. This is a little one from the tool shop rather than from the bassoon shop. It's a conical two. Uh, for more details on that you need to get in touch with me. Eric gets them for me. And you can use that in here to take some cane out by twisting. And then usually I follow that up with the, the diamond one or with a file just to remove any of those pesky bits of cane that fill up the tubes. So once you've got that fitting nicely on there, oh yes the other thing is if it's the other way around, if it's too loose on there then you can use some PTFE tape to actually make this fit better so you can wrap that tape around the staple, try not to block the actual hole, to make that bigger and then the reed will sit over the top, sorry I'm doing this slightly messily but you get the idea, the reed will sit over the top and that will bulk it out a bit and make sure it seals. It needs to be airtight that seal otherwise you will get squeaking. So once you've got that fitting nicely you're going to put it in the water for at least a minute I'd say. Like last time I'm only soaking the blades of the reed and the tube is staying out of the water. I think that the binding lasts longer that way. But you'll know when it's ready because the bottom here will still look damp. What happens is the water goes up it like a drinking straw kind of effect and so it gets wet all over. Now you can see I've got a pencil line on the blades here. That's where I've marked how long this should be for this particular model. So there's quite a lot of spare here on the end. And the reason there's so much spare is that I'm using um, bassoon cane for these reeds, but these are much smaller obviously than bassoon reeds, so we need to take that off. Now, for years I used to do this, as I showed you before, with my trimming block and my knife, put the knife over by the pencil mark and then push down hard. It's quite hard work and if you're doing quite a lot of them, um, it can get quite annoying. I would actually have to stand up and kind of hunch over it. So I was quite pleased when I came across this. This is my mega trimming tool, it's like a pair of garden secateurs, but it's got a flat surface here and then a sharp one on the top. So I'm going to use that, but if you haven't got one of these, go ahead and use the knife. Just need to make sure it's pretty much straight. And what I've done is I've put it just beyond the pencil mark, so I'm going to leave it ever so slightly long for now. And off it goes, over the horizon usually, to be tidied up at some future date. Okay, so that's now been trimmed off. And if I show you the end of it, you should be able to see that there's a lot more cane in the tip than you would usually have on a reed that you're going to play on. Um, if I try and blow down this, I can't get a sound out of it at all because it's way, way too tough. So it needs a lot of scraping. We're going to do very similar things with the scraping to what I showed you in the last video, but much, much more of it. So I'm going to be using the knife more strongly, I'm going to be taking more off. So we're going to insert our staple, uh, staple, our mandrel in the base and our plaque in between the blades. 
and I will draw on it and show you exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to scrape the tip all the way across. I'm going to scrape the sides, trying to take equal amounts for both sides, and then I'm going to probably also do the corners so that that becomes more of a pointed kind of shape that's left low at the top there. And then I might end up doing a little bit at the top here as well. This profiled cane from Riga, it obviously being made for pursued reeds, which are longer, it gets thinner towards the tip. But I've cut a lot of that thin stuff off, so I need to kind of almost recreate that on this particular model. So, let's get stuck in. So, um, this is not how I exactly normally hold it, by the way. Usually, if I was working without the cameras, the mandrel would almost sit against my chest, and so I'd be working much closer to myself, and I'd be able to see what I'm doing. But so that you can see it, I'm going to have to hunch forward a bit over the camera. So please excuse me while I do that. But hopefully you'll get a fairly good view, and you'll be able to see the lumps of cane coming off. So already, I've just got across the tip there, and I think I've more than halved the amount of cane in the tip. You don't have to be quite so brutal yourself if you're doing this for the first time. Bear in mind that I have scraped a lot of these, and I've obviously got relatively confident about it. So I'll do the sides now. There we go. Pencil's all gone. It's looking pretty uh, perky and curvy, so like I said, just a little bit lightly near at the, uh, the top of that flame shape at the middle. Okay, hopefully I've done that fairly symmetrically. Let's have a look at it. Yeah, that's sitting quite nicely. I'm going to turn it over now and do the other blade. You might be able to see there's a lot less cane on this blade that I've scraped than there is on this one, which I haven't yet. So let's turn it over. I do the same, so I do the tip first. If you haven't seen the previous video, I did talk a little bit more about where my fingers are going and knife angles and things like that. So it's worth going back and seeing that. I think it's marked up as adjustments and scraping, that one. On this side, I've got quite a ridge here that I'm going to get rid of, right in the middle. Don't want you. I'll get you to sit down a bit. Right, let's see where we are at. So you can see from the pile of shavings on my desk that I've done a lot more than I did on the adjustments and scraping video. There I was just making small changes to try and get a reed that was technically already finished to work better. This is, this is reed making, this is um, some significant sculpting we're doing of the cane here. Very, very much more heavy handed. And as I work, I start off very ha heavy handed and I gradually reduce the amount that I'm taking each time I go around. So, that is by no means finished, but it's definitely looking more like a reed. I'm going to close it down a bit using my fingers on the wires. Again, I've talked about this in previous videos, so do look them up. There we go. Right, this is not entirely symmetrical at the moment, so I don't know if you can see the tip opening. To my mind, it is closing on this side of the reed before it closes on this side of the reed. And it's slightly weaker, it's closing quicker on this blade than it is on this blade. So this is the weakest quarter, I would say. This needs no scraping at all. This maybe needs a little bit, and then either side of this, maybe a bit more. So I'll start with what I consider to be the strongest bits. So if it's sticking up, remember, that means it's stronger, and it needs a bit of a scrape. I'm just going to give it some more water. So this was the strong side here. Let's take some off there. and then turn it over and do the left, since that was the right on the other blade. And then a bit more. 
So what I'm doing there, I'm just putting my finger and thumb on the blade and as I close it, it kind of, you can see the, the, the closure come in from the sides. And if it's coming in from one side faster than the other, then that's the weaker side. And the other side, the strong side, is the one that needs scraping. A bit more on this side here. So I'm taking a lot less off now than I was to begin with already. I'm just very gradually now working towards where I want to be. You can see it's a bit rough there, so I'm just going to smooth that off. Try not to get any lumps and bumps. Okay, that's behaving itself now. Let's have a, a bit of a blow down it, see if it now makes a noise. Aha! It's alive! That to me is always the moment at which a, write, a reed becomes a living thing that can make sound. It's rather splendid, isn't it? Okay, um, now I had, when I cut the tip off with these, I left it a little bit long. So I'm now going to trim it down to its proper length using the knife. So I use the cutting block and the knife, and it's much easier now that I've removed a load of cane, making sure it's absolutely straight. And there she goes. So I've got little bits of cane there. And then I'm going to take the corners off. This is partly just tradition. It's partly um, that it looks neater. To me, it signals to myself that I've, you know, got to a certain point in the process and considered the reed to be playable today, even if it's not tomorrow. Often what happens at this point is that these will now be put on a rack to dry on the windowsill and I'll come back the next day and I will go again, check everything over and they will probably have hardened up, opened up a bit um, as they dry out and so it can take two or three times around that process before you've got a reed that you can just pick up, soak and play. Let's plug it into the instrument and see what kind of a sound it makes. Quite an easy blow, actually. Yep, that's definitely at the stage where I would put it aside and come back to it tomorrow and go through the adjustment steps from the previous video and just keep doing that until it behaves itself. So that has gone from being an unfinished read to a very nearly finished read and like I say the steps that uh, you need to take to get that then to work for you are covered previously. Next time round what I'm going to show is how to do the binding so forming the read putting the wires on and doing the the thread binding on it and then after that we'll look at shaping the cane and getting it ready so by then after two more videos you'll be able to make a read from scratch. See you then thanks for watching.